Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go off of our our our, our our combined loading problem example on that video, and and then and so now we have the state of stress, and we're gonna use more circle to use stress transformation. And so we're given essentially every stress transformation problem starts with a given state of stress without coordinate system, without a coordinate system. Okay, so that's something we have to define specifically for stress transformation and that coordinate system is local to that element and we want to find let's say for here we could find either at a new orientation some angle or we want to find principal stresses okay and draw the rve in this case or draw and then a principal stress state let me put that principal stress state or and in plane and this would be like a, another part or another problem in plane shear stress max in plane shear stress max in plane shear stress state and you want to be able to draw the rve and so we'll do this using more circle right here you can always use the stress transformation equations but so here we're given the state of stress and the first thing that we want to do is one well the first thing is this so one we're here let me draw it down here one the first thing we want to do is define a coordinate system on the rve or on the state on this rve this rve okay or the um on the rve that's given on given rve okay the representative volume element and so in this case here i have here, this going on like that. Right here, I have a stress like this. I'm just drawing my RVE out right now. Here, this is 5.855 ksi. Uh, the shear stress was 4.79. Let's just use 4.8 ksi and 5.9. 5.9 ksi. Actually, let's just use 6 ksi, so we don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Let's use, let's use four. Po let's keep four point eight, because I'm not. Oh no, we went we went from four point. Oh, uh, let's just do one. Ah, uh, gosh. Ah, who cares? It's it's okay. It's okay if I just use five and five and six. So five ksi, and six ksi to make our computations, like just 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 because it's an example, right here. And then we'll have six here. And then here, here again, like this. Okay. And so we want to define our coordinate system, our x and y using a right hand rule local for this point on that on the structure. So here I, I'm gonna it's typical to choose this as plus x and this as plus y. Okay. That's very typical. And once you define that coordinate system, that means you have established what sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y are now. And sigma x in this case would be minus 6 ksi, sigma y would be 0, and tau xy would be, I am on the plus x face in the plus y direction, so this would be a plus 5 ksi. Okay, right there. Right. And, and, and once, and this is very important, this is, it's almost like equilibrium, almost as important, especially for stress transformation, this is very important. If you can't do this, you're going to get everything wrong. So we have defined the coordinate system. Now we are ready to draw more circle. So that'll be two, draw the circle. And and really the first thing we're going to draw for more circle is the center of the circle, center. Or we want to locate the center of circle. Okay, the circle center. And so here the center is defined as sigma average comma zero, which in this case the location of the center is sigma average, which is minus six plus zero divided by two comma zero okay so this is these are the coordinates on my on my axes for more circle it's going to be um, minus three comma zero is my coordinate for the center of the circle so if i and let me i'll scroll down a little bit right here so on this side right here i'll, I'll draw it uh let me put a now when i draw more circle just as i was telling you 
I don't like to draw the vertical axis in right away just because I don't know how large that radius is going to be. And I want to, I want to try to, I don't want to throw myself off in a, in a, like a crunch situation, especially like in an exam. So I just draw one axis. I know that this is my plus sigma axis. And then I will call this point right here my center. And I call that minus three comma zero. So that'll be my center there. Okay. Then I need the first point of the circle. The first point of the circle is uh, point A, which is really what's given in the problem. And that point is just point A, or the first point that you need is A is a sigma x comma tau xy, which in this case is just minus 6 comma 5. Minus 6 comma 5. And the other thing you have to remember is that the plus tau is in the downward direction. Okay? Plus tau is in the downward direction. So really, this should be a little bit longer right here. So I go, let me see. Let's go 1, 2, 3. There's my, my minus 6, if you will. 4, 5, 6, negative. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right about here, this is my plus tau direction, okay? This, remember, plus tau is downwards, okay? Plus tau, the plus tau axis, which is going to be somewhere over 1, 2, 3. So right about here is plus tau is this way right here, my plus here. And this point right here in blue represents that first coordinate that I need to draw, which is minus 6, 5. And this this point right here represents essentially, right here, this represents theta equals zero degrees. This represents this x being right here, theta equals zero degrees. Okay? It represents this face right here. It represents this face. This face right there. Okay? That point. On more circle, this point represents that face. Theta equals zero. Now I have, bam, that's great. I can draw a line connecting my two. And, whoa, that was off. Edit, undo that one. Here, I'll just draw it here. This right there. Okay, I have that right. And I can, now I want to calculate that radius distance, r. R, so 2, r. And, and I can do this by... I, I don't need to get all sophisticated and fancy to calculate R. Uh, all I need is that I know that here's A. So A, here's A, going straight down right here. This distance right here is uh, is 3. This distance, oops, I don't need that right now. Okay, it's 3. And this distance is 5. Okay, and so R, the radius is the square root of, notice all these are in units of KSI, if you didn't know that right, right now, okay? All these are in KSI units here. But R is just square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. 5 squared plus 3 squared. Which is uh, 25 plus 9, what is that? Huh? Twenty-five plus nine is thirty-four. So, we're, yeah, what's the square root of thirty-four? Okay, okay. I think it's less than six. Should be five point something. Five point eight three ksi, like that. Okay, five point eight three ksi right there. So that's what that radius is. The other thing that's important for me is this angle right here because, okay, so the first thing we're going to look for are principal stresses is this angle right here, okay? And, uh, um, and really what we know from Moore circle is that, that you know, this location, when I, when I swing this arm down right here, this represents sigma 2, my least positive principal stress. And then here, where's my where's my sigma one going to be? It's going to be five point eight three 
so here this is 3, and then 5.83 beyond this negative 3 is 2.83. So right about, one, two, three, right about here is sigma 1. Okay, sigma 1 is my most positive principal stress. And remember, this distance right here is just r right here. So that means this coordinate right here is going to be uh, 5.83 minus 3. So this location is 2.83 comma 0 KSI. So sigma 1 is that. And then here, this, my least positive, is here going this way, minus 3. So this number right here is minus 8.83 comma 0 right here that coordinate right there. So that means that my minor principal stress is negative 8.83 KSI. Okay. And, and so that, that's great. I just found like my principal stresses without really, you know, so four principal stresses, stresses, and, and here the principal stresses, and obviously the shear stresses are zero in this principal stress state, and sigma one is 2.83 KSI. And sigma 2 is minus 8.83 KSI. Yay. Okay. And, and now, I, because I want to draw that representative volume element, I need to know some angles of how far I need to go. So here, the angle to get to theta, the second print theta P2, right here, I'll call that theta P2, is just, again, by simple geometry, that angle is just uh, tangent inverse tangent or tan theta p2 is equal to tangent inverse of the opposite over the adjacent five over we said three. Oh, great okay and can someone calculate that for me quickly tangent inverse Wait. 50, oh, whoa, whoa, my bad. I've got, to, I've got to put that 2 here. That 2 theta P2 is 59 point what? 4 degrees. All right, so about 59 degrees. Very good, right? And, and then so that makes theta P2 29.5 degrees about, okay? About 29.52 Okay, but anyway, 29.5 degrees, whatever, it's about the same, 30 degrees. So here, that, that is, you know, that's, that's great, okay? And, and so the thing you have to remember is that, okay, that's great, and then I go theta P1 is just really the, you know, the opposite of this, right here, this way, 180 minus 59.04, or, uh, you know, 90 degrees from 29.5, or something like that, right? And so here you could you could calculate that angle very quickly just from you know 180 minus 59.04, which would be give you something like 120, okay, or something close to that. That so here now we want to draw the RVE in this principal stress state. And so we know that if you go two theta and more circle, uh, and this is this rotation, this arrow is going clockwise. That means in quote unquote real life, you also have to rotate he over here to. Uh, uh, what is it? What did I say? Uh, cl counter clockwise, clockwise as well. So here, if if so, in the way I do this here, so look, check this out. I have this line right here, and this represents theta equals zero right here, like that. Okay. Then I know I'm going to go clockwise. I'm going to rotate this clockwise. So over here, I have I'm going to draw my horizontal to get to this point right here to get to sigma two. To get to this sigma 2, right here, the way I'm going to draw, I have this, here's my theta equals 0. i got to rotate counterclockwise uh, 2 theta P2, which is 29.5 degrees. So that means here, this is 29.05 degrees. Okay. So I draw this first. I draw the horizontal first from theta equals 0. Oh, 29.5. Oops. Okay. 29.5 or 30 degrees right here. And I go... Just like I went counter, or I went clockwise in more circle. I'm going clockwise here in my element, and using this line right here, this new line, I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to it, and that's going to be the that's going to be the face of my representative volume element. So that now, if I draw this right here, right here is this, okay. Here is this new line right here. Oops. 
like this. And here was my old horizontal. This is at theta P2 equal to 29.5 degrees. And the state of stress on this face at theta P2 is sigma 2 or minus 8.83 KSI, zero shear stress. So that means I have here 8.83 KSI going like that. Okay, I just probably drew that arrow a little too much. Too, I, I overdid it. I got too excited. Okay, that's 8.83 KSI. And then I, I, and then going from there to draw my RVE, I draw out the rest of my my representative volume element. Okay, right. And that means I go over here, and I know that going from this side all the way to over here is 180 and more circle. So going from here all the way to this side, I, you know, right here, all the way to this side is 180 and more circled. So that's 90 degrees in real life. And I went, let's see, to do this, to go like this, I went uh, uh, also clockwise. Yeah? Did I go clockwise too? Yeah, I, I went clockwise this way. So then if I go clockwise 90 degrees, I get to this face right here. Bam. And that's my sigma 1 face. And this is 2.83 KSI, and that I would have a 2.83 KSI over here by equilibrium, and right here, 8.83 KSI, okay, like that. And this would be my principal stress state. Awesome. Yeah, that's my principal stress state. Then I, I can do, you know, I can do all kinds of stuff. I can go, and, and look, I, you know, I never, let me erase this right here. I never drew the complete circle, okay? You don't have to draw the complete circle because, you know, how many of you carry around a compass just for fun, right? <laughs> so it, it's like, you know, what's the point of doing that? So the, the, the reality is that, that like, hey, you know, now for the maximum uh, in-plane shear stress, let's see, can you even see yellow? Let's see, can you see yellow? Uh, can you see that? Uh, that doesn't look good. Let's use orange. This orange right here. So here, for we know that the maximum shear stress occurs at the bottom of Morse circle. So here, somewhere right about here, I, if I if I rotate all the way down this way, right here, right here to the very bottom, and I know that this distance is also r, right? It's still the radius, okay? And I just need to find this angle, theta s, the angle to get there, right? And that angle, 2 theta s, right there, that angle right there. And so that angle from, from what I found before, 2 theta p2 was 29.5, I'm sorry, was 59.4. That makes 2 theta s equal to um, 90 degrees minus 59.04 degrees, which is... Uh, 30, 30 point, is that right? 30.96? 30.96 30 degrees to theta s. And that makes, you know, theta s about uh, 31 divided by 2, which is 15.5 degrees. Okay, theta s, 15.5 degrees. And in this time, I went, instead of going from zero, I went uh, clockwise. <laughs> I went counterclockwise from zero, okay? I went counterclockwise from zero. And I know that the value right here of my stress is going to be the radius value. So that's uh, the coordinate of this point is negative 3, comma, 5.83 KSI. Okay, that's the coordinate of that point. And so now if I want to draw, I draw, I want to draw my representative volume element here, right? So here again, I go here. I'm over here. I want to draw my rep. I start from theta equals zero, which was over here. And to get to this new point, I had to rotate a two theta s and more circle counterclockwise, which is 15.5 degrees in real life counterclockwise, meaning I go like this, 15.5 degrees 15.5 degrees counterclockwise and then and that means i'm on this face of my representative volume element i'm on that face right there 
And so I can, I can go down here now and examine that face right here. Here's that face again. Draw, draw it a little bit bigger so everyone can see it. And here, this angle, which I want to be a little bit more precise. Here is 15.5 degrees for theta s. And on this face, and I can draw the rest of my cube out once with that face right here. Rest of my cube. Like this. Right here. And I, I on that face, I would have uh, a, a normal stress of negative 3 KSI. That means here, a normal stress of negative 3. So that's compression of 3 KSI. And then a shear stress of, five po of positive 5.83 KSI. And the thing you have to remember is that this always follows a right-hand rule coordinate system, okay, plus and plus like that. So that means that this positive 5.83 is on the plus for this face in the plus other direction or plus x prime face in the plus y prime direction. So a lot of folks use like x prime, y prime or something that, that sometimes confuses people. But here, this would be right here, this 5.83 KSI. And I could fill in by equilibrium the other parts, like this, 5.83 KSI. I have the 3 KSI here, like this. And just to make sure that we double check everything, because I am missing one thing here, is that if I go, so if I, if I have this side right here, if I go, if I wanna look at this side, which is 90 degrees from this surface, Okay, 90 degrees from this side. I want to look at this side right here. That is 180 and more circle, which is the top, somewhere over here. Okay, and that is also has, this coordinate is minus 3, minus 5.83 right here. And that means that I would have over here also this 3 KSI. 3 KSI. And this would be my my shear my plane shear stress state. This would be max in plane shear stress. Okay, and this would be my principal stress from before. And the more you do it, the faster you get, and and the easier it gets. Okay, all right.